In the opening scene of the movie, protesters and demonstrators gather outside a government building to voice their grievances against Governor Sandro Correa, who stands accused of corruption and embezzlement of state funds. Amidst the chaos, the governor seeks refuge under a table, only to be discovered by a masked individual. Subsequently, members of the DAE force arm themselves and prepare for action. They later apprehend Correa while he is enjoying a cup of coffee and escort him to the interrogation room at their headquarters. Their colleagues applaud Edu and Miguel for their role in capturing the governor. During the interrogation, evidence of Correa's corruption and misuse of public funds is presented, leading to threats and attempted bribery from the governor in an effort to evade punishment. After a while, as the governor indulged in a sumptuous lunch, his lawyer made his entrance. Discussing his connections within the prosecutor's office, he reassured the governor of an imminent release from custody. He mentioned the possibility of being placed under house arrest during the investigation. Meanwhile, at the DAD headquarters, their commander convened a brief meeting and announced that the evidence linking Governor Correa to embezzlement of the health budget was insufficient. Consequently, he opted to permit the governor to return home under house arrest. Following the meeting, Miguel and his companion exited the office. Miguel proceeded to meet his daughter, who stood alongside her mother on the street, eagerly awaiting her father's arrival. They had planned to take their daughter to watch a football match. Upon his arrival, Miguel presented his daughter with a t-shirt, sparking her excitement. He helped her put on the shirt while her mother captured the moment in photographs. Afterwards, Miguel accompanied his daughter in a taxi, disembarking due to traffic congestion. As they made their way to the stadium, his daughter suddenly fell victim to a stray bullet, causing her to bleed profusely. In a panic, Miguel rushed her to the hospital's emergency room for urgent medical attention. Upon arrival, doctors swiftly whisked Miguel's daughter, Alice, into the emergency ward, instructing Miguel to wait outside. Anxiously pacing the hospital corridor, Miguel was confronted with the sight of numerous severely ill patients left unattended, highlighting the dire state of the hospital's facilities. His shock deepened as he found Alice lying motionless outside the operating room. Questioning the doctor about the delay, Miguel was informed of the hospital's limited operating capabilities, forcing patients to wait for their turn. Despite efforts to stem the bleeding, Alice's condition deteriorated rapidly until her pulse ceased altogether, leading to her tragic demise. Shortly thereafter, Miguel's ex-wife, Alice's mother, arrived at the hospital, devastated by the news of her daughter's passing. In a subsequent scene, the governor secured bail and was released from custody due to insufficient evidence. Seizing the opportunity, he took to the microphone and declared his candidacy for the presidency. Pledging to bolster the health sector's budget and improve public hospitals, he promised to enhance the welfare of the people. While jogging through the streets, Miguel's thoughts gravitated towards his daughter, his mind consumed by the notion that inadequate hospital facilities had ultimately led to her tragic demise. He couldn't shake the belief that had the health sector possessed better equipped hospitals, his daughter might still be alive. His conviction grew stronger as he encountered a news broadcast announcing Governor Correa's release from prison, absolved of all corruption and embezzlement charges involving health funds. Fueled by frustration and anger towards the system, Miguel found himself amidst a crowd of protesters near a government building. In a fit of rage, he lashed out at the police officers, prompting them to respond with tear gas, prompting him to don a mask. Drawing on his training as a former Special Forces operative, Miguel managed to overpower the officers guarding the building, scaling its walls to gain entry. In a swift and violent encounter, he confronted and ultimately killed one of the governor's bodyguards before cornering the governor himself, unleashing a barrage of punches that proved fatal. The following day, Miguel returned to his duties, only to be tasked by the chief at the head office to investigate the previous day's protests. The chief revealed that several suspects, believed to be the masterminds behind the demonstration, had been apprehended. Among them, Miguel recognized a woman he had encountered during the protest, where he had engaged in physical altercations with the police. In the interrogation room, Miguel confronts the woman who identifies herself as Nina, claiming to be a programmer. Nana boldly asserts her awareness of Miguel's involvement in the confrontation with the police and reveals she possesses footage of his actions on her cell phone. Forced to confront the evidence, Miguel begrudgingly retrieves her phone from the evidence room, verifying her claims. Faced with little recourse, Miguel reluctantly decides to release Nana. Later that night, back at his apartment, Miguel meticulously analyzes the video footage and reflects on recent events. Determined to uncover the truth, he manages to track down Nana's address and encounters her on the street. Nana, recognizing Miguel's resolve, presents him with Governor Correa's laptop and offers her assistance in investigating the embezzlement of medical funds and hospital equipment. 
Realizing the magnitude of the corruption, Miguel agrees to collaborate with Nena. Together, they delve into the contents of Korea's laptop, uncovering vital information implicating numerous politicians in the corruption scandal. Armed with incriminating evidence, Miguel embarks on a mission to hold the corrupt officials accountable. Donning his signature mask as a disguise, Miguel systematically targets each corrupt individual, swiftly eliminating them one by one. As news of the successive killing spreads, the repercussions reverberate throughout the political landscape, signaling a reckoning for those involved in the embezzlement and corruption within the health department. After seeking Nina out at her workplace, Miguel implores her to uncover the identities of the corrupt official sponsors. Initially hesitant, Nina box at Miguel's request. However, Miguel offers to leverage his influence to reduce the sentence for Nina's imprisoned mother, compelling Nina to reconsider. Following their conversation, Nina visits her mother in prison, grappling with the concept of truth. Her mother offers a sobering perspective, asserting that truth is subjective, varying from one person to another. In the subsequent scene, Nina manages to unearth the profiles of the corrupt politician sponsors, revealing them to be none other than Gomes. Taking matters into her own hands, Nina orchestrates surveillance on Gomes as he meets with Minister Regina. Meanwhile, in the DAE head office, Edu sifts through the suspect's files, stumbling upon Nina's profile. Realizing the masked man's next target, referred to as the Awakener, Edu attempts to reach Miguel to warn him, but to no avail. Undeterred, Edu ventures alone to the location where Minister Regina is meeting. Spotting the masked assailant, he gives chase and ultimately shoots Miguel. Injured, Miguel seeks refuge with Nena, who tends to his wounds. The following day, Miguel and Edu present their findings implicating Minister Regina and Gomes. However, their chief dismisses their investigation and orders them to cease probing into the matter. Frustrated by the decision, Miguel resolves to take matters into his own hands and exact justice upon Gomes himself. As Miguel arrives at Gomes's residence, he observes the family dinner unfolding, including Gomes's son expressing reluctance about assuming the presidency. Despite the son's reservations, Gomes attempts to bolster his confidence. In a shocking turn of events, Miguel deliberately shoots Gomes's son, aiming to force Gomes to acknowledge his culpability. However, Gomes cunningly exploits his son's death to garner public sympathy and position himself as a presidential candidate. Meanwhile, a mysterious figure, later revealed to be Sequira, emerges as a private investigator hired by Gomes to probe the deaths of his associates. Sequira's investigation leads him to conclude that the killer has an accomplice, eventually targeting Nana's boss as the alleged partner. Subsequently, Sequera eliminates Nana's boss. Upon discovering her boss's demise, Nana rushes to Miguel's hideout, pursued by Sequera and his operatives. A chaotic confrontation ensues, with Miguel urging Nana to flee while he confronts their assailants. Donning his mask once more, Miguel engages in a fierce battle against Sequera's men. <laughs> In the midst of the melee, Sequera seizes Nina as a hostage, proposing a deal to spare her life in exchange for Miguel assassinating another presidential candidate, Julia Machado. Reluctantly, Miguel agrees to Sequera's terms. As the police descend upon Miguel's hideout, Edu and his team make a startling discovery. The elusive Awakner is none other than Miguel himself, Edu's closest friend and colleague. Shocked by this revelation, Edu and his team uncover evidence linking Miguel to the targeting of Gomes. In a race against time, Edu and his team rush to the location of the presidential candidate debate, where Miguel intends to assassinate Julia. As Miguel prepares to carry out his deadly mission, Edu intervenes, confronting his friend in a desperate attempt to halt his violent actions. Despite Edu's impassioned pleas for Miguel to cease his vigilant activities, Miguel remains resolute, heedless of his friend's appeals. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nina, held captive by Sequera, summons the courage to fight back ultimately managing to inflict serious injury upon her captor. As chaos ensues both inside and outside the debate venue, Miguel finds himself arrested for the murders of the corrupt officials. In a last-ditch effort to reach Miguel, Edu brings Miguel's ex-wife to visit him in prison, hoping her words will sway him. Tearfully, she expresses her concern that their daughter would be ashamed of Miguel's actions, rather than proud of her father. Inside his prison cell, Miguel learns that Gomes has emerged victorious in the elections, However, his moment of reflection is interrupted by the arrival of Deputy Diaz, one of Miguel's former superiors, who attempts to kill him. In a dramatic turn of events, Miguel manages to evade his attacker and exact his own form of justice. Miguel escapes from prison, prepares weapons and ammunition, and rushes to the parliament building, 
where Gomes and his fellow politicians are celebrating the victory of Gomes, who had managed to beat Julia in the results. Miguel attacked the parliament building without delay and killed all of Gomes' men and colleagues. When he finally confronts Gomes in his office, he tells Miguel that corruption will not disappear from the world because greed is a basic human trait. Miguel shot Gomes to death. After killing Gomes, Miguel was surrounded by Gomes' men at gunpoint. But Miguel had another plan. Miguel had already prepared a bomb that he had fixed in his car. Miguel pressed the bomb detonator, and immediately the building exploded and raised to the ground along with Miguel inside. The scene unfolds the morning after the devastating explosion as rescuers, police, and forensic teams come through the rubble of the demolished parliament building. Amidst the debris, they discover only the mask of the enigmatic vigilant known as the Awakener, but Miguel's body is nowhere to be found. As the camera pans upwards, the silhouette of the Awakener is seen perched atop a neighboring building, his presence lingering ominously. With determination in his gaze he takes aim, his intentions unclear, leaving viewers to ponder the next chapter of his vigilant crusade. The screen fades to black, concluding the film with a sense of intrigue and anticipation for what lies ahead. The End So, what do you think of this movie? Did you enjoy the recap? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. One like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video to your friends and family too. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next videos.